It's the final showdown. Yes. Well, that's the countdown, but this is the showdown. <laughs> this, this is, uh... It's the eschaton, baby. We're here immunitizing. Um, I'm transitioning right now. Yeah? You want, you, you're ordering that... That HRT... Yeah, you, I realized that I'll never be able to please a woman, so I might as well become one. Become the yeah, become the woman. You ordering the? Uh, are you are you just touching lot touching and uh, heating lots of food in plastic, or are you actually doing the uh, more official? No, I got that HRT, baby. I'm okay, you you yeah. got the real, yeah, the real power, the strong lives. stuff. Yeah, the dilating. I severed my genitals. Oh yourself? The, oh, you did the yeah, DIY. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Some people don't know you can do transition transition surgery at home. It um, saves you so much money. Yeah, it's like having a home birth, basically. It's like you get into a bathtub. No drugs. Uh, instead of it being warm water, it's very cold water. And you just cut that shit off. Ice water. Yeah, you don't even feel it. I, I didn't. I'm talking, for, talking to you from inside of my bathtub right now. Oh, you got to stay in there. Because otherwise, yeah, for, oh yeah, it'll it's, start uh, being a world of hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, call me Emma now. Oh, that's um, a nice. I like that. That's a good name. I've had it. I mean, I've had it picked out ever since I knew that. Uh, again, once again, I could never pleasure a woman, so I might as well become one. You never, just never. You never made a woman cool. I uh, once. No, you know, it's just I get down there and I'm like. I'm at home. This is who I'm supposed to be. <laughs> it's like looking in a mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck are you mumbling about down there? Like, I have needs that need to be attended to. This is and, real. Uh, this is me. <laughs> this is exactly where I'm supposed to. What are you? Like, why are you singing? You're supposed to be eating my pussy. <laughs> yeah, people say, like, you're supposed to sing, you know, sing the alphabet or whatever, but I'm just, I'm on my own tune, baby. <laughs> <laughs> on my own tune, sing to my own tune. Uh, this, I, how how much Evan Williams do I have to drink before we can get a sponsorship? <laughs> uh, enough for you to start contacting people on Twitter because I'm too cowardly to do that. You need to be the one, man. I got it. You need to. I'll you need have, you have connections. Them. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm industry insider material for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I have. I uh, I'm here to spoil the entirety of Star Wars Episode Nine. By the way. I okay so I oh that's the one the spoilers. that's the thing I was gonna that, that's I just realized like today uh what you meant when you sent when you tweeted at because we had this conversation um I was we were talking about Star Wars I said have you read the leaks you said you haven't and I said I said someone needs to call in a red flag on Mike Stoklasa and you said uh, he's definitely found a way to tap into humanity's higher consciousness. And I didn't know what you meant, so I just ignored it for a few days. And then I realized you thought I meant he predicted all of them. Mm. Whereas what I was saying was someone needs to call a red flag, referencing red flag laws, to take away his guns because he's going to fucking shoot himself because that movie's going to oh, suck. Oh, no. <laughs> that movie's going to kill yeah. everyone. That movie is. That something. movie's going to be garbage. <laughs> Oh what? my god. You're gonna bring that Palpatine. Dude. He's gonna go, eh, oh, eh, he's gonna eh, be the best part of that movie, but holy yeah. shit, I read what happens in that movie and I, uh... it's unbelievable. You thought uh the rest of them were fan fiction. Who buddy, it is rough. Uh it sounds I, like a nightmare. I need to watch episode seven again. 
uh, with David, our friend David, who has watched all the Star Wars movies and loves them, by the way. Wow, he was right, shitting on them for... a weird thing for David to like. He, he sh- has been shitting on them for the better portion of the time that I've known him. He's like, Star Wars is dumb. People are like, we'll just swallow any garbage. And he watched them, and it turns out he really likes them. Um, I mean, which, like, he watched, he never he had never seen any of them? Uh, he had seen the prequels when he was a little kid, but he never seen the original trilogy or anything. Uh, and he went back and watched all of it, and turns out he likes all of it. Regardless of when it came out, he enjoys it. Ah, um, he likes He likes lightsabers. It's like the opposite of me because because I don't even know if I like the original trilogy anymore at this point. I'm listening. Oh no, they're they're so good. Just watch them with David. I don't. It's just I. uh, uh, I mean, the first those first two are like fine, but um, dude, Return of Jedi is still so good. I just watched Mm, it, man. Oh, I don't know. It's like Gunbuster. Like it's it's like that same kind of itch is scratched, where it's just like they stick the landing so fucking hard. Do yeah, they? Luke, going, Luke, Luke goes there over there and looks at the force ghosts, and then he's able to move on. It's beautiful, it's beautiful, man. I was, I was de- profoundly moved. This was my favorite viewing of Return of the Jedi, far and away. Oh, all the Endor stuff, and just all the ghosts are always there. And oh no, but it's great. It's just <laughs> another Death Star. You know, it like, I, I, every time one of these movies is coming out, they play that interview or not interview but like that tv segment of uh siskel and ebert arguing with that other critic who hated star uh-huh. wars and it's just like everything he says is so spot on and at one point he says this is like 1980 or whatever at one point he says that disney should be making these movies <laughs> like everything he says is well like comes completely true it and doesn't it, retroactively make those movies worse though is the thing it's a thing that's hard to grapple with, which for the longest time I'd completely discarded them because I, I was like, yeah, I really love Empire and, you know, and, and uh, A New Hope is great. But then watching them all again with David, I was totally wrapped up in the magic. Like I was sold because I was also viewing the original cuts of them because these fucking crazy people have scanned original theatrical prints of the film from when they came out. So it's not like you're viewing like the remastered versions or whatever. It's the original... Mm-hmm you know, un, unadulterated, you know, 70s and 80s effects. I, I, I was profoundly moved. I had, I had a great time watching them again. But uh, I don't know. I, don't, I, I guess I can only speak for myself. Hmm. Um, well, the other thing we need your hot opinions on is that, it, obviously, we got to talk about that new Kanye. Mm. It's the hot thing. Yeah, I, uh, I, I officially think that Kanye is no longer making music for me. Um, yeah. This must be what it was like when you get to the like the the latter days of Led Zeppelin, you know, where they still making albums and some of the songs on those albums are decent, but you're just not invested all the way through anymore and it doesn't feel as crucial as it once did. Um that being said, I do think this is an extension of him going completely fucking insane. Like I I, can't, I don't think he's in his right mind whatsoever. I I think he's needs to go he needs to go through a lot of therapy, frankly. Having not think, listened to the album, I think you're full of shit, buddy. Oh yeah, yeah. You think you think him coming to Christ is is uh, totally genuine? Uh, it's hard to say. I don't know. It could it's, it's it could probably go either way. Of like he like uh, you know he, he this is he's serious about this and he's gonna stick with it, or his next album is gonna be called Come Fest, <laughs> uh, and it's uh, all songs about. Uh, drinking cum. Songs about coming. Songs about coming. Yes. <laughs> um. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, like I, I'm. St- I first of all, I will say this: I'm going to go see his IMAX movie in theaters because I can. I'm gonna go see it. Isn't it like 20 minutes long, and it's just a shot of a, a static minutes. shot of a choir singing? 30, 30, 30 minutes long, uh, and it's at this art installation in the desert. Uh, it's it, and. I'm just interested because I, I really like the medium of IMAX. I think it's an interesting medium and very few things have really compelled me to go see them in IMAX as of late. And if I was ever going to do it, I would love to see it on, on Kanye's ego trip. Like that would be like the perfect time to go and see the pinnacle of what cinema can be, you know, like the, the, the top end capturing equipment, the top end audio equipment, you know, just like, 
the, the the most expensive possible production you can have use only to fuel Kanye's ego is exactly how I want to experience IMAX. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm willing to drop the ten dollars for thirty minutes worth of of footage, um, which is shocking wow. to me. But yeah. but there are like there are comparable things that have come out on IMAX before, uh, like Kronos, which is this uh, forty five minute long experimental thing from the guy who made Koyan Scotsy and Baraka. Um, which I would totally see that, you know, if I had the opportunity to do so. But yeah, like this is modern IMAX equipment and Kanye West. I'm not going to say no. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, um, so I'm going to be down there in a week. Do you also know everything that happens in Joker? No. No? Okay. I've avoided everything. That'll I'm be neat. Completely, I'm completely, uh, I've, I've, I've gotten very good at avoiding spoilers on things. Because it turns out if you just don't go on the internet ever yeah. and you only read like NFL news, you'll just never encounter movie spoilers. Yeah. Well, I stopped caring yeah. about spoilers, so I know I've I uh I haven't seen any, any of the original scenes. I've only seen uh meme versions uh, of the scenes, except for like one. Um although it is probably the climax of the movie. But um But uh I'll be glad to see your reaction. That'll be neat. Yeah, I I know absolutely fucking nothing about the movie whatsoever wow. other than it's got joaquin phoenix in it and he plays the joker <laughs> holy <laughs> shit oh yeah. my god it's like every no, every I, scene I told you I'm good at it. Every, there, there are several scenes of that movie that have become like enormous they're already like uh uh like uh 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 class you know just um uh cultural mainstays you know i've seen him look, so many man, times in the last look, man, three I'm weeks a business owner every time you say that it's so funny it's got, probably true but did you have to like make an llc did you have to like yeah, submit yeah. documents and shit oh yeah oh yeah, nice that shit for is sure. it is it an LLC? llc yeah for sure oh hell yeah 100%. yeah yeah did you name it a funny I, name or did you just give it a serious I name i did yeah, I, I named it after one of my favorite lines from one of my favorite movies, Everybody Wants Some, by Richard Linklater. Okay, um, I mean, you shouldn't say what it is, but that's funny. That's too deep. No way anybody would fucking remember that shit. But um, anyway, yeah, I, I started a business, and now I just get calls from people at like 8 in the morning. I think you were talking like, about, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, nobody knows what the fuck they want, and it's impossible to communicate with these people. Yep. Um, because they're they just don't know what they need ever they don't know what they need they don't know what you can provide yeah like i oh god i can't go go too into detail about what i do because it's so boring but man you would not believe the amount of stress i have typing up these emails like trying to suss out more information from these fools yeah they're just they're not going to provide you what you need immediately up front they're just going to give you like the most vague sort of inkling as to what they're getting at and then you need to be some sort of uh, decoding master. You, you know, you, you need to be fucking imitation game out here, you know, flipping those dials and the, the decoding machine to figure out what's going on. Yeah, a lot of people, I've noticed this working in an office, have no idea that they have to, like, sort of mold and translate information because other people don't have all the information that they have in their brains so they'll i'll just get emails from people that'll be like just these rambling uh uh, just paragraphs of nonsense that i don't that makes that clearly makes sense in their mind but like has no i have no idea what they're talking about and uh (laughs) and i have to just be like okay uh i just well yeah yeah, yeah, just like contextless, like strands of information, like just non sequiturs. Yeah, just bra- uh, just breezing past words that I they expect me to know what they mean by this word when it makes no sense in context. It's yeah, it's a yeah. fucking nightmare. I don't know how these people. I, uh, yeah, I I um, it is. I I swear to God, oh, starting a business has permanently destroyed my ability to have game. Like, oh, no. you know, I talk, I talk to girls. And I'm so overly specific and like, I just, I, I, I'm so catered at this point to, you know, the lowest common denominator and also. I would like to stick things. my penis. Are you with me so far? <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, no, I just, I can't like, in, in dating apps, here's the problem on dating apps is that <clears throat> girls expect you to have the most, you need to have an uproarious laugh out of them or be incredibly profound within the first like two exchanges. Otherwise it's just not going to happen. See, all the advice I've received has been to just like, not even ask, just say, let's meet here 7 p.m. Friday. Are you down? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's how I've had the most success. But a lot of people want to have a little bit more of a conversation than that. Hmm. Um, I don't know. At this point, I've just resigned myself that I'll I'll bumble fuck my way into a relationship eventually. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I just can't be fucked anymore because I I I weirdly been on a roll of like going on dates with girls that are like getting their masters in very specific things, and it turns out if you get your masters in something, you only know about that subject. And it makes you a very kind of, you know, unipolar person. That and Parks and Rec. Right, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and they, they are looking for the, the gym to their pants. Oh, uh, <laughs> he's fucking... Oh, God. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, but, um, I mean, I could talk about a lot of different things. You know, I consider myself to be well-read at this point. I could talk about a lot of shit. But mm -hmm. nobody wants to talk about it. <laughs> no, no one wants to talk about anything except. Yeah. That's why I could. Uh, that's like that's the problem I had like in high school and shit. Like I was like the only people I had an opportunity to make friends with were in marching band. But I would mm -hmm. like sit around with them and all they wanted to talk about because they were all fucking nerds, but not like fun nerds. Yeah. And just yeah. like all they were talking about was band, like the music, and school. Like and, yeah, and I, we we, I, yeah. we get like that five minute least, breaks. That's the least interesting subject. And ever. it's like we finally we've been practicing for fucking band for three hours. We finally get a break, and they want to talk about band and school, and like that's it. And it was like I could not relate to them at all. I never made friends yeah, with anyone in there. The least interesting subjects ever. I don't want to talk about school. I want to talk about everything outside of school. Yeah. You know, they and I just wanted to banter and shoot the shit. You know, and and. Uh, and just see where conversations will go. Um, this is something I really enjoyed at like every job I've ever had is trying to get a conversation out of someone who has absolutely no right having that conversation. You know, just like because that's I mean, I think that's the kind of person I am is that I I like pulling people outside their comfort zones. That's probably not right, but it's all I I mean, that's all I can really do, I think. A lot it's, of people probably enjoy that. Even if they right, act that, and, like they don't. <clears throat> Um, and you'll get some good conversations out of people if you just pressure them into having very specific conversations. I got to a point where I was I was talking about the Trayvon Carter case with the, with with somebody. Trayvon worked. Martin. Oh, sorry, that that was a person from my own life. We're gonna have to edit that out. Uh, Trayvon Martin. We're case. live. Uh, I'll, please don't look him up. There's probably <laughs> very many of them. Uh, Tray, the Trayvon Martin case, and uh, yeah, like it was just fascinating. Just because he, he he was this catalog of information, he knew every intricate detail of the case, like how all the events unfurled and shit. And I I don't know, it, it's that can either be yeah, that can either either be great or really uncomfortable. I was at my grandma's uh my grandmother's birthday party today, and my uh soon to be step dad I guess or yeah. whatever my mom's my mom's fiance's brother was talking to my cousin about uh, about uh, Caitlyn Jenner. And he's just like, my cousin's not talking. And he's just going over 10 minutes like, oh, it's so creepy, this fucking weirdo. Man, <laughs> God, so weird, he's fucking... And he looks like Bruce Jenner, and it's just fucking horrible, you know? <laughs> just going yeah. on for 10 minutes of my cousin saying nothing, and I'm right in between them, and I can't, like, leave the table. Yeah, you're, I'm you're sitting stuck. there going, you're just, stuck. like, sort yeah, of nodding, you know? Secretly, you can leave, though. That's um, something I've learned, is that you can actually abort. I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to betray the fact that... Um, I'm, le you know, because obviously the only reason I would leave is because of that, and uh, no, 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 but who cares? Because it would be, I don't know, it would be kind of making it worse for them because I, I I mean, they would notice. I got pinned because uh, I, I, I'm a younger person as you are, 
And it, last Christmas, not for long, buddy. I don't know. Uh, what we're young, we're young. Men. I don't know how much lo- how much longer we can say that. Uh, until I think we're, until we're like thirty. I think thirties when you're no longer a young man. Twenty uh, nine year olds, a young man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if, if an old timer sees you on the road, he's like, hey, "Excuse me, young man." Well, Would that's you be able I don't know. Direct me down to the to the soda shop. I'm mm-hmm. trying to have a float. But uh, I'm trying to have a malt. <laughs> I'm listening to this new Jesus and King record. I just that got done blasts. necking this girl. <laughs> um, yeah, I got I got pinned uh, at a Christmas party because I'm a younger person, and they expect me as a younger person to have all the answers in regards to like social issues. So um, one, of, one of my, my relatives is, came out as uh, non-gender conforming. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and like, yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't give a fuck. It's their own life. I'll call them whatever they want to be called. Uh, and they expected me to have all the answers as, as far because this person was not there. But they were fascinated by this. And like, what, what do you know about this, Ethan? Like, what do you know about this non-gender conforming thing? I'm like, oh, fuck. So mm-hmm. I have like I have like six people above the age of 55 staring at me, expecting me to have concrete answers to these really complex internal problems of some other person. And I did my best, but it was a very uncomfortable position to be in. And uh, at least I was very drunk at the time. So that helped a lot. Yeah, that's but, good. Uh, it's always good to be drunk all the time. I yeah, find. tell me about it. Um, that's that's a subject of the new season of BoJack Horseman. But uh, oh. but uh, anyway, yeah, that was an uncomfortable position to be in. And I know that if you were in that position, you would have actually shriveled up and died. Now, that's the kind of stuff that I'm that I understand well enough that, that I can uh, probably explain it in a uh, in, a, in a sufficient way, way in a, yeah in a way that's um, very uh, understandable yet somewhat broad I guess I don't know yeah. how else I would say it yeah, I guess it was difficult because it was like uh, it was somebody in my you know in my family of sorts you know and I was speaking for them and that was difficult but I don't know uh, anyway, we, 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 this is an anime podcast, I guess. Speaking of speaking of not real genders, how about animal genders? <laughs> the sexiest of all. Oh no. Um. Yes. So, uh, f- uh, finale of fall, finishing up fall here, right at the butt end of October, but we made it. <clears throat> um, and our first show is Beast Stars, Beasters. Yeah, that's a, that's a a bit of a rough name when you actually see it in English. Yeah, I bet he thought it was clever, but uh, <laughs> yeah, um, furry show. Don't go to, watch to the the Oh to find no, some content you don't want to consume. Is it from this show, or is that's not? No, it's it's almost certainly gonna be. Uh, you know. Oh, you have you haven't checked? No. I bet it's just take, the official I'll website. Uh, that, that returns a 404. Yeah, it's not there. Although it's not like a... The domain does exist. It's just a 404 page. Weird. Um, Beastars is a manga. Uh, a manga that started approximately seven months after a certain Zootopia came out. Uh. Uh, it's a furry show. Uh, being animated by Orange. They did... Uh, Dimension W with three hertz, and they did Hoseki no Kuni, which is a really good uh, uh, CG show. That where the CG looked good, and the show was also good. And this one is also CG. Which, which one is Hoseki no Kuni? Uh, uh, Land of the Gems show, Land of the Lustrous. Oh, okay, yeah, that did look good. It did look good, and it was a really good show. Uh, shockingly, I still don't understand how it was as good as it was. This this studio does a great job with CG. I gotta say, this I show does not look nearly as good as Soseki no Kuni, in Did my opinion. Creep, what whatever. the mouth movements are all weird. I will talk about it. Okay. Um, and uh, it stars a wolf and a bunny again. Maybe a little Zootopia influence. I'm mm-hmm. guessing. I'm uh, uh, postulating. Um, but the first scene is a goat who gets eaten. And, um, uh, it's, yeah, it's, a, you know, it's a lot of, they're at a school, it's a lot of basic racism stuff, much like Zootopia, but it's carnivores versus herbivores. 
Something um, that's always confused me about this carnivore versus herbivore divide <laughs> yeah. in these types of media is that don't carnivores eat other carnivores? Like not they, always. Like, no, but like you know, the, the the big fish eat the little fish. I learned that from Star Wars Episode One. You know, like that's, there's no there's fish always, here. These are all land animals. Yeah, yeah, but that's a metaphor for you know the the idea that. If there's a bigger carnivore around, he's probably going to snatch up a little carnivore, no? But like what? I mean, I, like there's not that many. That doesn't happen that often, I'm guessing. And also, if there are if there are herbivores around, a carnivore is not going to go for a carnivore. Go to go to go for the easiest thing possible. Maybe I guess I just kind of uh, had assumed the the chain was a little bit. I don't know. Never mind. Yeah, Ignore I mean, me. if your Everyone school if your talking. school's full of. Uh, full of bunnies and you know goats or whatever and they're not gonna i guess a fox and a wolf aren't gonna fuck around no. they're just not even Why gonna bother you if you've got there's yeah. plentiful other food sources around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so yeah uh basic racism stuff the one i figured the one suspicious guy who they think uh ate the uh the, the goat boy and they're like oh he's creepy and it's like obviously he's not gonna be the perp turns out at the end spoilers uh, it is, which is the one interesting thing about this show is that I do like that he is built up as being the weirdo, but he's actually has a heart of gold, and he couldn't be the killer, but then he is. Uh, Not that it's uh, him. Well, it's There's... yeah, he sees the moon and transforms or fucking whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, our, our main character is the a wolf, and um, he. Uh, there's one scene where he's retur He's giving a love letter from the goat boy. To the uh, girl that he, the goat boy, liked, and um, it's a very silly scene because the, the, this lyrical OST kicks in at one point. <laughs> it's very funny. Yes. Um, that's the, that's the point where I realized, like, oh yeah, they they knew this guy that just like died, and they're all acting really normal. You don't really was get so that sense. To me. Yeah. If if somebody died at our high school, the school was shut down. I mean, yeah, it, it, I mean, it would get a day or two off. At well, least. I mean. If they were murdered specifically at the school, yeah, 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 <laughs> you know. But they're just kind of chatting away, like it's not, it, you know. I guess it is an animal environment where. But that does it happen that often? Like, it, and they're acting like it's kind of a surprise. I don't know. I don't know. If it happens once per year, it would probably be unsettling, but not uncommon enough. You know, like. Yeah, Maybe. I, I guess if you're this in, in this close to proximity, it might happen. Yeah, the thing I was weird out by it's like okay there's carnivores and herbivores but it's like you know humans are omnivores and we generally don't really worry about eating each other so i don't i don't know why it's an issue in this world different species i guess but it's like surely the carnivores are eating something that they've they got right it, it's a problem in zootopia as well it's like where the fuck do they get all their food from you know there's like gotta be something but maybe yeah, that maybe uh, that live Prey is just too tasty, too succulent. All that adrenaline. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You get probably getting off on it. Your yeah, that's is alive, like juices with like wine. It's got yeah. If I bet, I bet animals hunt and feel sort of a. It's, it's probably better. It's probably it's somewhere in the order of magnitude of sex feelings in your brain. Probably pretty awesome. Comfort's great. You know, <laughs> um, there's a very handsome deer. I was in the drama I club. Actually, I thought they could have made him more handsome. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, but he is apparently very handsome, but they had to tell you this. Yes, because you know the wolf guy is pretty pretty swanky. He's there got the suspenders. There was a bunny in this that was quite unsettling. Who who's like a, a, a she was split down the middle. Oh, the half black. <clears throat> like yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was very unsettling. What did she say? At. She has like a species. She's some kind of harlequin rabbit? Yeah, she's a harlequin rabbit rather than dwarf rabbit, which is a common breed. Yeah, um, so there's... I, I found her very unsettling to look at. Eh, I don't know. Uh, besides the main bunny, the other sexy thing is that... Uh, I don't know if it's a raccoon or what, but the, thing with the lady with the stripe across her face. There was something oddly arousing about her. They could have made the they could have made the animals a little hotter if I'm being honest. Yeah, if I'm yeah, that's the that's the main problem I would say is that they're not hot enough. 
<laughs> like, the furry like, show isn't hot enough. It would it would help. I think okay, well I think like, I think the show's for girls. Really. Maybe. So I don't think they're gonna make the girl animals hot. I think like I think it's for girls because um the main bunny who is sort of the I don't know if she's the main character, but she's definitely at least the second main character. And her problem is that she's just too cute and independent, mm. you know? So all these I boys, all the boys love me, but they can't handle how, uh, you know, intelligent or, or free-spirited I am or whatever, you know? So it's Also, for... the boys come a little bit close to kissing at points, I thought. Maybe. I thought the I thought the boys were a little homoerotically charged at times, which the girls like. I understand. Yes, I do. Yes, I think I believe that is true. Um, so the, well, yeah, there's a there's a point where the deer grabs the wolf by the tail, right? And it's like an extended shot where he, he's just kind of like staring up at him a little coyly, and I'm like, I think they're gonna fuck, but uh, they don't. There's an energy to it. Mm. Um, but the last sort of scene is um. Since Goat Boy died, they have to find a replacement. And apparently, to have the replacement practice, they have to be on the stage. I don't know why, but they have to sneak into the theater at night. So, um, uh, main character Wolf is guarding the theater. Um, dropping something over there. Yeah, I dropped it. And, uh, so, uh, and then he sees Bunny and he goes beast mode, literally. <laughs> and, um, attacks her and it's like oh my god oh there's a really funny shot of him the smell the oh, smell the entering smelly. his brain the smell. it's slowly it's a x-ray and you see his whole bone <laughs> structure and it goes through a nose and it's just like lingers around in his in his brain oh god damn that it bunny is smell. so for the bunny, bunny smell so i guess it is him he's the guy he fucking killed the dude it's fucked up. I'm gonna be honest. I actually really liked the show. Really, <laughs> I really liked it. I liked the way that it looked. Uh, I liked the lighting design of the show, which is a, a a very specific thing that a lot of shows don't really stick out to me for. But I thought the lighting design was great. Um, I like the. I I think if it leaned a little harder into the dark kind of horror aspect, I would like it even more. Um, I thought. For once, because they were animals, I kind of bought the the girl is so cute that it ends up being a problem, you know, creating problems that, in her that life. That solves that problem. That's that fixes yeah, it for I, you. It it did because they're <laughs> different. They're different species, and uh, that just kind of erased that for me. There's like a, a suspension of disbelief that comes into play when you make them animals. Yeah, I just I really liked the way it was directed. I was pretty invested the entire time, honestly. All right, I wasn't yeah. big on it. Really, because I just, yeah, I didn't like the, because I was comparing it to Hoseki no Kuni, and it just isn't as, isn't as fluid. There are some, there are some shots, particularly of that deer, that uh, make it a little tough. But yeah, no, I, I, I really like the way it looked, and uh, thoroughly invested the entire time. I think I liked it more than you disliked it. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a little like. It's it's a little run of the mill at times, specifically in the intro sequence and then the sequence at the end where it's like pretty typical shoujo, gotta protect the girl type thing, you know? Mm -hmm. He's like dangerous, but it's hot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, for whatever reason, I was pretty invested in it. Okay, cool. I'm glad you liked. I'm just not as I'm just not very interested in seeing what happens. Should have made him hotter. I don't. I just don't really like any of these uh, any of these characters. Bunny's kind of hot, but she's a whore, so who cares? I, w I hope she gets eaten, actually. Um, did you watch Assassin's Pride? I think I had you watch Assassin's Pride. I did. Yeah, I've seen this show wow. spelled both with and without an apostrophe. I do not know the correct one. I don't know if it's Assassin's plural or if it's belonging to an assassin. I just don't know. But it's a light novel. Animation EMT squared. They did uh, Renai Bokun. And Alice or Alice? I don't know. What I do know is that this is the flat show. And I knew that before watching it. And that was confirmed for sure. Not, there was not a, a bud to be found. Nary. Nary. Nary a bud. <laughs> nary. Nary a, a buxom lady to be found. Nowhere. Um, but it's about this assassin boy. 
It starts out with him cutting bullets. The first scene, the first, <laughs> so silly. the first scene was really funny. I was, I, I was enjoying it. Uh, he's yeah. in like this office and people are shooting him, and he's just. Um, I'm like, this is what people think anime is. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Totally contextless. Just oh, so good. And then um, he gets on a train and he's being a being a gentleman for this lady helping her get off my the lady. train. Yeah. My, yeah. my subs had my lady. He's so he's so corny. <laughs> subs are also total ass for this, by the way, from my from what I saw. I, I didn't was... notice anything in particular. Um. But uh, he and he winds up in fake Italy. So many shows set in fake Italy uh, this this season. And I think he has healing powers. He heals a cat. Um, I've written Joker shows. I don't know what that means. Oh, shoes. He has Joker shoes. He has the mm. he has the joke. Oh, right. You don't have you. You're not. You haven't been exposed to the memes. No. Joaquin Phoenix wears some shoes. They look like bowling. I'm shoes. I'm excited to see those shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Only one more week, buddy. We're gonna we're gonna be the uh, our tickets are gonna be the ones that that uh, make it surpass a million. We're gonna be the we're, we're gonna, gonna put it the over the edge. That, we're gonna be the tickets that get flagged by the fucking FBI. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna post some stuff on Twitter for before and after I see that movie, and I'm gonna finally get my my own personal um, having a CIA handler in 2019 is the equivalent of having a guardian angel. I think mm. someone who monitors you. Anyways, it smells like the, the the breath is decidedly more stained with coffee though. The CIA handlers as, a, as opposed hours. to what angels. What do they smell like? Angel stuff. Oh, that's nice. Probably like Honey. fluff. You remember marshmallow fluff? Yeah, like uh, yeah, like uh, pop potpourri Flame, or uh, flaming hot Cheetos. Or uh, what's the? Oh God, what's what's the scent that's always in cologne that people make fun of? Patchouli. Patchouli. <laughs> <laughs> my CIA handler smells like patchouli. Um, that's my favorite anime for next season. Well, there's a Toho character named Patchouli. Uh, so his last name is, is Vampire, I guess? Yes. Whatever. He's got a very silly name. Um, but then we meet Koopa, our- Koopa Vampire. Koopa Vampire. <laughs> uh, but we meet our main girl who is, uh, got tiny little buns, uh, ribbons, thigh highs. She's t- perfectly flat. By your powers combined, I'm not Asuna from Sword Art Online. Uh-huh. I'm totally not. Actually, Asuna has big cans, I think. So she's like a flat Asuna. Um, but uh, she falls off a balcony and he catches her. Her name is her name is Melinda Angel, which is <laughs> I, I was like, is this a porno? Up to the stage, we yeah. got Melinda Angel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Lady yeah. Black. <laughs> Oh, oh! Our 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 uh, podcastly text from Mage. He might Mage finally decided to show up. Jeez, thanks for uh, expressing his opinion on Assassin's Pride. Not really. He just posted a picture of sent us a picture uh, hey, of Tippy. I, I got a I got a message from him. He's in the the chat. Oh, it does have flat girl. They're all so. Not only are they flat, they're all so dainty and skinny, and they're all wearing spats. Um, excellent character design, another, honestly. Another show. There's there are several other shows that come to mind when like I, maybe Rokubu or um, uh, I, don't, I don't know. The, it's not the other show by project project number nine. Um, so yeah, he meets her. Uh, there uh, she goes to like this courtyard with all the other girls. Who and they spar together, but uh, Melinda's problem is she doesn't have magic, no no mana. She's a light bloomer, uh-huh. and um, they're fighting. And somehow there are zero panties in the show, even though their skirts are also insanely short. They uh, they somehow avoid the panties, but uh, they are all super skinny. Um, and then uh, the big development here is that main character. It turns out he is an assassin. She's got no mana, so his job is to actually kill her. This is an assassin in air quotes. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, uh, I mean, I'm sure he's, I wonder, he's probably killed people. I think. Maybe. Just, but, but, you know, how could you kill something like this? Something so pure. 
something. Uh, so he tries to kill her. He shows up in a room, but she's run away. And she's running from all these pumpkin shadows. And, that looked um, like a Kingdom Hearts ass fucking thing <laughs> if there ever was one. Yeah, or like a Persona mob. Yes, exactly. Um, and it turns out her what like her dad sends these or like the estate sends these to her to like challenge her to try and coax the mana out of her confirm that she's indeed an angel um this is like the this is like a fantasy metaphor for like trying to get a prepubescent girl to orgasm just seeing if she's finally there you know just kind of twiddling that was like like one of my favorite arcs in game of thrones when they spend four episodes <laughs> trying, <laughs> just like trying to figure it out, is she come yet? It's just having her brother, yeah, just uh, just fiddle around with the with the clit for, for three episodes. That George R. R. Martin was a fucking sick motherfucker. <laughs> was he still alive? Disgusting bastard. Uh, I've, um, heard, I've heard that the 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 seventh book is going to be just nothing but incest. When was the last time he put out a book? Oh, I think it was like 2011 or something. Hold on. Oh my god. They're not joking when they say he's fucking uh, chilling. No pun intended. Ooh. White walkers, am I right, guys? What? Nothing. I haven't seen that shit. Um, but then uh, the worst part of the show by far is this scene where the pumpkin demons are about to cut her hair and the speech she gives is... Oh my god. Not even they don't even try to it's just she's shouting, "Please do not cut my hair. I hold great sentimental value for it in my character. <laughs> it reminds me of my deceased mother and I have great attachment to her." I mean, that's all that's like almost verbatim. It sounds like an outline or like yeah. something gets tossed around in a writing room. It's insane that she says this. Yes, it's like my character development is no, please do not uh, change my character in this way. It's I will help so that's uh embarrassing the last george R. R. martin book was in 2011 holy shit dude i mean he's making so much bank i can't blame him he'll probably oh, wow. never finish them i wonder yeah so um yeah we get to it's time to awaken that mana i've written penis time i don't oh because because it's she he, he's like i can awaken your mana for you i'm like all right yep this is dick <laughs> This is Dick, but it, it well, is not Dick. it is in fact just a kisu, of course. Um, but it's like a, some a kind of rather than Dick you. Yes, uh, a mouth liquid transfer, and um, she gets into this maybe metaphorical like lake that she's sinking down into. That and, sequence uh, was so silly looking because she doesn't like move at all. It's just like a static character moving across this void. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, the post credit scene is, uh, it turns out it worked. She has, she's got mana now. So, um, and uh, the main character is, is so fucking chuny. This guy is, he's so overdramatic. It's like the, it's just like the distillation of the worst pre isekai anime in now, one go. Now, that is true. However, well, first of all, it's not isekai. Second of all, no, no, that's what I'm saying. It's pre isekai. Like, this is oh. what anime was like. Like bad anime was like before we had a bunch of bad isekais. Yeah, you know. I yeah, I I think that's true. But this is bad. However, I do like it. <laughs> I I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it. I thought it was it was delightful schlock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was super silly and like, uh, I've. I've seen worse, and and I just like how base it is. It just appeals to very specific things. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's got to do with a cool sword. It kisses a girl, and and the girl's got powers now. They, yeah, that. Um. Uh, yeah, it's entertaining, and the character design, spot on. They know what I like. They know what uh, they know what they're doing. Uh. Oh. I'm, uh, are we able to take a quick break? I mean, we just started. We're on, like, the second show. What? We, 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 we did a quite, a quite about, a decent amount of banter before we started actually talking about anime. Yeah, I guess we're, like, probably 40 or 45 minutes in. All right, I guess. Uh, hold on. I need to find some break music. Yep. Cue it up, man. Cue what up? I mean, um... Uh, All right, I'm going to go while you queue that up. No, well, no. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go into music here. 
What's a good... Let's have about the Magical Pokemon soundtrack. Um, I need something that's at least a couple minutes. That's a Christmas themed. No, that's not gonna work. Hmm. Well, that's a weird one. Oh, sorry guys, I'm trying real hard. Here we go. Okay, let's see. Hopefully, hopefully this is on YouTube. There we go. Be right back. lovely song and we're back folks mm. yeah well, what did we talk about in the past 30 minutes we talked about two shows and we talked about kanye west the joker and uh we started out with something else but i forget what it was i don't recall yep mm. so, uh, um, had to top myself off with some evan here um, so I was just, what I did you of, how, how much of it like did you buy this recently like how how big is this bottle i need to I know everything. a 1.75 liter bottle oh a handle oh my god yes yes what's the what's the brand here this is evan williams i mean what's the name of the this is bottled in bond this was a 25 dollar bottle i need to see what this handle of evan williams looks like nice Comically large. It doesn't say um, bottled in bond on it. It's what it's like a white label. It says yeah, it just it just says Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Are you sure you haven't you are you sure you don't just have a straight Evan Williams? Well, yes. I, I can confirm that I do not have just straight Evan Williams. Because there's I'm not seeing any pictures of any bottles that say bottled in bond on them. Oh, here we go. I found one. Mine says "Battle of the Bond" on it. It's huge. That might just that might. Are you sure that's a, are you sure that's different than just Evan Williams? It's a hundred proof, man. I don't know what to tell you, brother. All right. Um, I was thinking about this show. Sometimes I have to view shows through like a, a prism. And in a this prism. particular show, I was viewing it through the prism of, what if I was 12 and I had never seen another anime before? Isn't that the best feeling when you watch shit yeah. when you've never seen anime before yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's just the most incredible thing? 
Right, exactly. Even even yeah. when the subs are literally fucking with you and just not even trying, and they're just troll mm -hmm. subs. I'm just like You're hell doing yeah. You're it on on like a streaming site, like a bootleg streaming site. I remember watching like Heat on No years. Aria. I was watching Heat on No Aria, and everyone was just just fucking hated it. And I was like, this is pretty all right, you know. It's got it's got uh, Rie Kagumiya. She's flat. It's great. Yeah, I could just imagine like a stupid show like Assassin's Pride when I was twelve, blowing my goddamn mind. He's like, "Oh my god, he kissed her. This is crazy." Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fucking nuts. My dick's so hard. Oh yeah. Because it always is when you're twelve. It always is. I mean, yeah, when you're twelve. Uh, people, I, I, I feel like. Uh, I mean, I guess I should be grateful. Everyone's always like, remember getting random boners when you're 12? And I was like, remember? Dude, I'm hard, I'm hard like 50% of the time. I don't watch porn. I'm fucking ready to go Hell yeah, 100% of the day. Um, Just in case, in case of the, the opportunity arises, you too well, shall arise. Yeah. Um, okay, I guess our next show, uh, I think you watched No Guns Life. Sure did. I watched, I think, about half of it and fell asleep. But oh I think I got the general idea. Um, Did you finish it? Yes. Okay. I woke up and finished it, I think. Or I woke up and it was over and I couldn't remember how much of it I had seen. But I scrolled through most of it and I see, it seemed like I had uh, watched most of it. So I think I'm good. Um, yeah, No Guns Like Manga by uh or or manga animated by madhouse <laughs> i don't know if this is the madhouse b team or not it looks okay i think this is um, a fucking a team in my heart man yeah my man's face is a gun let's <laughs> get that one out of the way no joke my dude is a gun he's six eight i think it looks like from the opening he's got a gun head uh, and he, yeah, he's got a gun head and metal arms, hands. Uh, yeah, it takes place in a world where there are, what are they called? Extens extendeds? Sure. I think. Uh, yeah, modification, sci-fi, you get it, cyberpunk. And he's a gun. And even the other people are like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, it's apparently, yeah, yeah. apparently it is unusual to be a gun in this world. Yeah, it's pretty extreme. People are like, people are like robots and stuff, but like, this guy's a gun and everyone's like, Whoa. <laughs> Hold up. Just, some people got robot eyes. My man's got no eyes. I think he's got gun eyes. Uh, so, um... I did not anticipate this being a real show. <laughs> I did not anticipate this, like, having a narrative. The, the character you thought it was just going to be, like, gags or something? Sure, yeah. That's basically what I thought, was that it was going to be, like, a cop-style, like, you know, kind of gag comedy. Not that Inferno, Inferno Cop has a narrative, you know, but like, um, yeah. I didn't expect this to have like a serious narrative. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, the, um, you know how shows like the title card will come up and it has like a subtitle, like a mm -hmm. tagline. This one's is, quote, SF hard boiled the gun smoke <laughs> drifts the muzzle talks. End quote. So I that's that fantastic. Tombstone. Yeah. People will be confused as motherfucker. <laughs> Our main character is, uh, they call him Resolver. <laughs> yes. Because he's a revolver. But his real name is Juzo. And um, I couldn't really tell how tongue in cheek this was because this fucking guy is so over the top noir. Yes. He's like, he might as well be saying shit like, I work alone and, you know, fuck shit like that. He's so, he's so um, hard boiled. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is funny. Um, and there's a guy in his apartment and, um, it's and just, it's the, just, my it's only. It's always cool when somebody has all the lines. Like, he's got a, a quick response to everything. It's so much fun. And he also gets flustered when ladies kiss him, though. Yes. But uh, the old my my two his weakness his weakness is humidity and women. It's same man. Um, my last two notes are lol and okay. I fell asleep here, but I think this was okay. 
Um, great. At one point, there was a big titty lady. There was, yeah, he, he was hiding a guy who escaped from an orphanage because he stole a kid, but the orphanage was bad, I think. Uh, and he hides that guy. And uh, he carries the kid around and it's like a sewer. And then some lady shows up, but she's got big old... She's, this female JoJo character shows up with big-ass fucking titties. Yes. And uh, I think she wins... She does manage to take the kid back, but that doesn't break break our gunman's resolve. Resolve for Resolver. resolving once again to yep, go yep. and find this kid. Exactly. Uh, I, uh, so it's funny that his face is a gun. <laughs> we'll see how the rest of the show pans out. I I was compelled. I like the character of Resolver. He's like, he's like a super by the books kind of detective guy, um, but he seems a little bit more clever. And I, I just I like the sh- the look of the show. I think the character is like appropriately ugly. I'm trying to think of a lever pun to come up to, to pair with clever. This he's show like has got a, plenty revolver. of levity. There you go. Um, it kind of reminded me a little. I don't know if this is appropriate, but it reminded me a little bit of Black Lagoon. Um, okay, but, but not quite. I I, I couldn't re- really put my finger on exactly what this is doing. It's got a lot of. A lot of those sort of hard-boiled detective tropes, but again, his head is a gun, and I, I, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that is I can't get over like uh, they play it pretty straight that his head is just a gun. <laughs> I can I can see this show going interesting places. I was compelled. I was I, I was I I found this compelling. I enjoyed watching it, and it reminds me of like the best parts of Cyber City Oedo. Where it's, it's, but, but imagine if the person's head was a gun. If his head was a gun. Yeah, I mean, did we yeah. get a lot of action in, the, in this first episode? My memory's hazy. There's like, a, there's not a lot a of fight sequence at the at the end with uh, with the titty lady and and our gunman. Okay. Um, it's not. It's mostly talking. It's not a ton of action. But I think he's he's a he's a pi. He's not necessarily an action man. The his head's time. a gun. What do you mean he's not an action man? Not yet. Okay. All right. Uh, oh I yeah. Like, don't they? I like the twist. I like the twist that the guy, the boy he was rescuing, was controlling the robot man who delivered the boy to Gunman. Oh, I didn't catch that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That that was the thing. Is that he? So this boy is dropped off by this kind of like uh, this other robot guy. Robot man. Yeah. 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 And the robot man ends up. It turns out that he's being controlled by the little boy, whose power is the ability to control robot people. Interesting. Yes. Uh, Don't they mention at one point that Resolver's head gun hasn't actually gone off? Like, he hasn't used it? He hasn't at least used it since this World War thing that happened. He was developed Oh, yeah, there was a the great military. war. Okay. There, I do have to say the best part of the entire episode, which I, I don't know if you recall or not, is this, this boy has been, has been taken. Uh, Gunman has failed, it seems. But then Gunman had placed a tracker in the boy's ear and found that he was on this train that was going towards the facility. Yeah. So so gunman resolver punches the fucking train as it's going full speed and, and uh, stops it in its tracks, which is goddamn amazing. Oh, that sounds and pretty cool. I should watch the second half of this episode it's again. Super fucking cool. Yeah, like it's it's uh it's like you see this boy on this train, you're like, oh man, it'd be super cool if, if gunman <laughs> found a way to get in here. But nope, he just punches that shit. It's awesome. Cool. Also, his his cigarettes get wet. He's smoking cigarettes the entire episode. They get wet. I just light another. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I hate human being kids, and uh, but you know that that compels him to go on and try to save the child. Loved Never it. Never stop, gunman. Loved it. Cool. Yeah, this season seemed backloaded. I feel like all yes. the all the good shows are uh, in the last third here. Weirdly, so yes. Uh, next up. Do, do, do. Hoshinosora. Yes. Sports. Sports again. Uh, this show is called Stars Align. Mm. It's an original show uh, animated by 8 bit and directed by Kazuki Akane, who you might know from Escaflown and Noane uh, and Code Geass Akito the Exiled. How could I forget? You remember Noane? I do remember Noe. That's a weird one. Yeah. He he sure likes making kids suffer a lot. <laughs> uh yeah. 
I was upset. My, the, you know, I did like this show. The one thing is I was upset about is that it ended up being tennis and not badminton. Because you see the promo art. They got the rackets. I'm like, ooh, this better be badminton. Mm -hmm. I really should be able to tell the difference between a badminton and a tennis racket at this point. But whatever. Is there any sport more appropriately named than soft tennis? I don't know what the, f the I, I th is that an only is that an only Japanese term? What is the no, fuck people, is soft people tennis? No, people play tennis on on uh, sand or dirt surfaces. That's a thing. Oh, okay, okay, so that's what that means. Um, yes, but soft tennis is very apropos for the boys that this show follows. Because holy shit! Wait, it, see, Wiki of... Wikipedia just says soft tennis is a racket game. Played on a court of two halves separated by a net. It's not different from tennis. Well, if if you look at images of soft tennis, it's it's played on like a... Oh, it differs from regular tennis in that it uses soft rubber balls instead of hard yellow balls. Oh, interesting. Because so I balls see it on different. grass fields. I bet, I bet they usually just play it on grass, but I don't know if that's necessary for its soft tennis. Um... Mm. These are some of the softest damn boys I've ever seen in my life. That's These the, boomers don't give a fuck. That's the, uh, yeah, the least, the most ridiculous part of this show is, um, so the main character, we see him, he's moving into his new apartment. He's new in town, transfer student. Um, the next thing we see is that in this school, the boys soft tenny team it sucks, but not only do they suck, they suck compared to the girls team, which is a ridiculous concept. I mean, that's just... You can have them suck, but, like, keep it within the bounds of reality. Like, this Depends is... Depends on what age. No, like, it's if like... If you're, like, 12. If you're 12... They're not 12. They're in high school. 13. They're, no, Japanese high school starts at 15. Oh, really? Uh, yes. It's because it's 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18. Yeah, because they only have three years of high school. Okay. okay. Uh... And, like, the most famous tennis match of all time was, Yay. like, the number one female tennis player versus, like, the number 154th male tennis player. And he was drunk and he won. And he was, like, 58. You know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, smoked, just, just chief in sync. <laughs> <laughs> and he was Shia LaBeouf. Um, so it's, like, that part isn't real. You can't take that seriously. Um, but it is funny that like they don't give a shit at all and they aren't even trying. Yes. And they're just like messing around and uh, <laughs> like messing around to the point where it's making like the female coach angry. I can relate to that. I can relate to that. There were points where I was like stuck into like a like a soccer team at one point, and I'm like I don't give a fuck about soccer. I'm just gonna <laughs> go around and like just try to <laughs> faff about with my boys, you know? Yeah. Rather than worry about winning this bullshit game, I don't give a fuck about. I fucking hate sports. I know. <laughs> I. Why well, about you face me in the library? Mm. Face me like a man in the court well, of the you intellect. Were working your muscles. I was working on my brain. I was work. I studied the bl the brain. <laughs> uh, so um, there's a really f funny shot of them by hanging out by a tree just like well, there's one guy that's taking his shoes off and he's in his socks and he's rolling the balls around on the ground with his feet <laughs> <laughs> like there's yeah, they're, they're just there's, don't care. there's such fuck ups yeah they don't care at all <laughs> I, mean, I really like i found that very endearing <laughs> yeah 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 totally like get, get once you get past like the unrealism of them sucking compared to girls it's like it's so funny how few shits they give they're they're also like seemingly morons, which I liked as well. Like they're almost simple, you know. Like some of them are a little simple. <laughs> One guy just re just is only in tennis to get pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and he like at one point he storms off and is like I'm gonna fuck fuck you I'm gonna go fucking fuck some girls and he like trips over <laughs> trips over a uh, a uh, uh, what what do you call the thing you jump over oh. and track oh a uh, uh, barrier no uh, a steep no, girdle no. Gir gir uh, Her a hurdle hurdle yes so um, <laughs> that's something completely different yeah no I don't worry about about that um. So yeah, right off the bat, all these characters are super funny and, and endearing um, and have really great dynamic with each other. Um, and uh, then there's a scene with the student council, the head of which is fat. Holy shit. My girl is big. Yeah, uh, yeah, she's powerful lady. 
You can't handle a woman that big. No, she's, she's too intense. You don't know what to do with her. I'm, I'm, I feel uh, threatened, yeah. Uh, but uh, she decides that if your club sucks, she ain't getting no money no more. So the um, the the guys team just uh, interprets what that as meaning. She, what club is she fucking part of? She's is the she student part of the council. Eating club? Oh damn! <laughs> wish I had my sound effects up. I wish I had the the, the horn. Um, but yeah, the they they decide they have to win a tournament or win a match at least, so their club doesn't get disbanded. So um. So then we go back to our main character. Turns out he used to live in this town. He's come back. And um, his old friend who's in the tennis club, he gives him uh, this nerd book from his brother. So I guess his friend's brother kind of tutored him in tennis or something. Um, and then when club recruitment time comes along, uh, the boys' tennis team trying to recruit people they're not having any luck because again they don't care so they're just like sleeping lying around with these like homeless signs and there's this wall jumping cat loose in their classroom they don't explain why this is but uh main character uh very good reflexes he catches the cat mid-air which impresses everyone and um so his friend asks him to join the tennis club uh, but he's not interested and um i'm just gonna uh, go off on a tangent here and mention that the main girl, this messy hair girl who's friends with MC is girl of the season, maybe girl of the year. She's the cute. cutest girl. She's the cutest thing I've ever seen ever. Um, I like her kind of like distant sort of attitude. She's a little, like, she's a little snappy, but she's not, uh, you know, she's not annoying, you know, Mm-hmm. She she's not a harpy, but she's a she's got a little bit of a temperament. But mostly she's just so fucking cute. This is my, the this is my favorite type of hairdo on an anime bitch. The sort of messy uh, uh, ice cream scoop. Very floofy. Ugh. God damn. All the character design in the show is pretty good, but she is. Uh, this is a this is just dangerous. This is unfair. Um, character designed by Yuichi Takahashi. Love, uh, love that guy. You might know him for do- doing yeah. the character design in nothing else. Well, I hope he does more. Oh, he directed something. What the fuck is this? Yuichi Takahashi. Ignore me. I'm going deep in here. <laughs> I'm I'm diving in. Wait, I'm, this is a different Takahashi. Yuichi Yuichi. Takahashi going in. There's so many Yuichi Takahashi's. This guy was born in 1828. I don't think that's the right one. Animator. Maybe. Okay. Those guys live for a pretty long time. Character design. Comic, Comet Lucifer. That had decent character design. That crazy blue haired, purple haired girl with the gradient. Oh, Fooly Cooly Alternative character design. Hmm. Really? I'm not, why am I not seeing this on Good this page design. that I'm on, which should be comprehensive? Gotchman Crowd's Insight character design. Okay. Um, Macross Frontier character design. Gatchaman Crowds. Okay, yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And this, and, oh, Tsuritama. She's a drill. We should watch Tsuritama at some point, the fishing show. The cute, cute boys fishing show. Um, most of the screenshots I took of this show are this cute-ass fucking girl. Oh, God. Just when I thought this season was doomed. This this angel from heaven she's arrives. Quite cute. She's, she's perfect. Quite, she's quite cute. She's flawless. Uh what else we got? What uh, else do we got? Okay, so he doesn't want to join this ten- tennis club. Um and there's there's also this li- really weird little hint about um the main tennis guy who's in the club, his mom really not a fan of him she likes the older brother but she seems afraid of him yeah i don't know what the fuck was going on i don't know there. what's the going on with that younger brother seems like a totally normal guy i mean he's got a little bit of a he's a little assertive you know but not like a freak yeah like is there like is his mom crazy or is he actually like 
Like, does he actually have crazy anger issues? Like, is he going to have an outburst, you know? Maybe. I don't know. You know, this this main character, our actual main character, uh, was built to just get the living fuck kicked out of him. So, like, <laughs> so it would make sense if he got the shit kicked out of him by one of his peers as well. Yeah. So, finally, um, to join the club, he demands money because that's the only reason he'll do it. Um, And I... I was thinking, like, what would I pay? I was thinking, like, maybe a hundred bucks a month. Boom! I was right on the mark. Ten or uh, ten, yeah, ten thousand yen a month. He offers him, and he basically accepts. He doesn't say anything, but it's an implied ex- exception. Um, and then we that, get that gets you a Call of Duty and all the expansion packs. <laughs> Sweet, bro! <laughs> I, I I can't wait to get all those. Exp- I'm gonna order the. That season pass, I'm gonna get. Do they have China. Do they have Chinatown. They got uh, fucking. They've got uh, Nuketown. Yeah, the what 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 version. version of Nuketown they got? I need all this the Nuketown. This is Call of Duty Black Ops Three. You're getting the zombies version of. That. Why haven't they gone crazy in Call of Duty? Can I be Hatsune Miku in Call of Duty yet? Like, why haven't <laughs> they just why? I feel like they're moving away from microtransactions or something. I want like yeah, fucking. I want to. Yeah. I want to be. Uh, you know. I, 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 I want to be Colonel Sanders. Yeah, I want to be Luigi. You know, like just fucking go nuts. You have a you have a trillion dollars. Just fucking let me let me be a big a a big nose. A big a big three D. Uh, uh, make it just basically make it VR chat. I want to be give in me, VR chat. My little pony character. Yeah, let me be Fluttershy. There you give go. Give me voice samples. Let me make a uh, um, weird sorry, noises. As you're killing people, like if you kill somebody and she's Great. Yeah, why why isn't there a slash dance in Call of Duty? <laughs> there might be. I wonder if I should buy Red Dead Red Dead Two is coming out on PC in like a week. Once I get my new CPU, once Intel allows me to buy CPU, I will be buying Red Dead. I feel like it's gonna be more GPU heavy. Uh I got I got one of the newer GPUs, I'm gonna be just fine. Okay. But uh, I think a lot of games are secretly pretty hard pretty CPU heavy now. Oh, these days? Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. so yeah he joins the tennis club and this you know the episode ends on a really good note good music and i was like shit that was fantastic i was at like a nine out of ten and then there's this post credit scene where the guy just gets the shit beat out of him by his deadbeat father and yeah, it's gets, so he gets, the, he gets the living fuck kicked out of him he well he like his, yeah i mean yeah he he's head kicked yeah yeah and then he just like cowers in a corner and the dad like takes a bunch of money and leaves. And it's just like, I thought this was going to be sort of like a, just like a teen drama of just sort of people like, um, you know, friends getting back together and forming. And it's just like, just like light drama and just like adding this like really cheesy, like boilerplate abusive dad thing. It just like it just sort of took a, such a huge nosedive for me like it legitimately took it from like a nine to like a seven for me as it, as just that one scene in japan it's just so unnecessary even if even putting aside the fact of how like totally uh like uninspired and unrealistic it is it's it's just it doesn't need to be in there at all so uh yeah that's a that's a big problem hope they get past that pretty quick I think that's probably going to be a bulk of the show, if I'm being honest. I think it's going to be a constant thing throughout. I don't think you escape something that dramatic uh, that easily. That sucks. Is the, is the dad going to go to one of his tennis games and go, oh, and, no. and realize? <laughs> or no, are, no. They, are, gonna, are, are his friends? Heckle. He's going to heckle one of, with, with one of his dirtbag fucking gangster friends. That seems even dumber. That's not going to happen. He doesn't It'll care happen. about te- he doesn't care about tennis. He just wants money. Look, man, I've seen so much Riverdale at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm immersed in Riverdale. I I know all about teens. You can't uh, you can't surpass me when it comes to teens. I know what they want. I know what they need. I know what they crave. Uh, it's what teens uh, crave. <laughs> Astroglide. It's what teens crave. <laughs> What's Astroglide? That sounds like a lube. It's a sex lube for your cock. Oh. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, we're gonna have so many titles for this episode. <laughs> oh lord. You know, usually our worst re- worst episode is the third season recap or the final season recap, but this one's going just fine. Yeah, this was gliding along thanks to that astro gloob uh, glob. <laughs> uh, okay, I think that's everything we need to say about about that show. But uh, I gotta go through all my pictures of what's her face. I like the part where she's filming on her cell phone. Oh, she loves the kitty. Who doesn't? God, I just want to fluff it. Ugh. Do it for her. Her and um, Mile and the blue-haired cotton candy girl from the game show show. Three girls of the season. The girl from Assassin's Pride is okay, too. My mom tells me that I need a girlfriend. Little does she know that I've got three this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, mom. <laughs> You don't know the realms I've entered. You don't. You don't even understand. <laughs> you don't even understand the cooch I'm getting oh, doesn't Lord. even exist in this world. That's how my. That's how hard my game Trans- is. Transcendental cooch. I've transcended this. I've transcended this dimension's cooch, mom. I can no longer be satisfied by three-dimensional thoughts. No, mom. I haven't switched to flannel sheets because I'm too busy, fucking. <laughs> The cooch on these girls whose existence you can't even fucking comprehend. Uh, no, I haven't gotten my flu shot, mom. Okay, because <laughs> I'm too busy injecting my fucking coom. <laughs> I don't need a flu shot. I got a flu shot. I've been telling my mom I've been getting a flu shot for like the past five years. I haven't gotten one. <laughs> You're not going to get the flu. You're <laughs> no, of course. And even if I do, I'm 24 and I'm healthy as shit. Like, what do yeah, I care if I get the flu? Yeah, I get some fuck. days off work. Like a week. Who like, gives yeah, a shit? Fuck. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I haven't gotten a shot since I was like 18 or like 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like when the fuck do I care? I got, one, I got one of those HPV shots and I'm like, I'm not going to do that anymore. And then I didn't. Oh, yeah. God, I, I've been like thinking about like my mom had me get the HPV shots. It was like three of them over the course of six months. Yeah, fuck that. When I was like 12. And it just dawned on me recently how fucking creepy that is. That it's, it's just like, in case hey, my... Just in case you're mashing cunt. Yeah, yeah. Here, hey, my 12-year-old son. Here, in case you in case you get involved with a fucking disease-ridden, like, VD uh, uh, tramp, uh, you know, better safe than sorry. <laughs> I, fucking, I, look, look, how about look, you Declan. just tell me not to do that, you know? <laughs> look, Declan, you little slut. I know you're a fucking bug. I know you're a bug chasing whore, and I'm just gonna try to cut you off of the past. <laughs> you little cum slut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh just uh, I'm I'm gonna uh, give my ten year old son condoms, you know, just in case, right? Better better than nothing. He is a little hot though. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He probably has a has a smooth little cock. Oh god, we gotta that, stop. I that was the. Um, the one time I decided to to fuck with a, a blue check on Twitter, I had white women replying to me all day, just hundreds of tweets with office gifts, because uh, I found this one of those women who's like a little too into the idea of her like twelve year old son having sex, uh. and she was like, I can't stop him, you know, so I'm just gonna let it. And I replied, I was just like, I agree, my my little Zayden, I found out he was experimenting with heroin, so I gave him some clean needles, just in case. And I had women replying to me all day. And only about... You go, girl. It was about half of them understood that I was making fun of her, but were still mad. And the other half were just like, what the fuck? You know, but it was all office gifts. I like my little tide pool of Twitter, which consists of like eight people. All of whom I know. Oh, yeah, all your friends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like like... What of which is a, one of which is a bot? Is that an actual bot? Someone yeah. actually made a bot about your friend? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to really step outside my comfort zone and get into the deep dark ocean of Twitter because, yeah. like, I don't know if I'm gonna be get myself into a fight I can't win. You know, I'll 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 be there for you. I can help you out. Oh, you're gonna clap back for me? I know how it works. Yeah, you can just ask oh. me ask me for everything to say. You just it's easy. Once you learn. Yeah, it's mostly a joke. I just don't really give a fuck about what people have to say for the most part. Yeah. I, all these fuckers are cutting me off in traffic. You think I give a fuck about what they have to say? <laughs> I don't know what that means, but sure. Uh, 
<laughs> falling down part two <laughs> falling up <laughs> yeah yeah um okay so show i wash that you didn't is um wait We finished Ho- Hoshai no Sora. Oh, right. Oh, sorry. I was on the wrong row. Yes. I watched uh, Kabukicho Sherlock. Yes. I didn't have you watching this one on the list because I figured, oh, God, another fucking Sherlock show. There's like one show every season where the guy is Sherlock. Of course. Um. So it's like whatever. So this one, uh, this is an original production IG. Um. The English title is Case File N Degrees 221 colon Kabukicho. Bit of a stretch. I don't know. The director of Aoharu Ride uh, and Dance with Devils and Oregairu. Um, it's the, it, our main character is this guy. Um, he, uh, he's, he's walking through Kabukicho, which is like the red light district, Tokyo. He meets up with this black guy and he asks for the pipe cat. Um, basically, he ends up in this secret, you know, underground, shady, you know, red light district type stuff. And there's this drag queen, this really muscular drag queen, like singing, doing like a cabaret act or something. And it's like this underground club where they hire detectives to do a, it's like a competition to see who can find a murderer first. And they're looking for Jack the Ripper. That's so, fucking capitalism at work, baby. Um, so I don't know if this is alternate reality, if if they're all named after the real, but I don't know. It's just Jack the Ripper's out there. And um, so main character is looking for Holmes, Holmes' son, and uh, finds him. He drives him to the crime scene that they're checking out. It's this whore who's been killed in like a hotel room or something. And looking around at the body... Um, this there's this one hotshot detective who seems like kind of a fraud who's competing with Holmes and it looks like he's tampering with evidence but that never comes back to, for the rest of the episode that's kind of weird but um, then they head to this hostess club and Sherlock is this sort of weird dude uh, he's wearing the Holmes hat but he's like this sort of like disheveled looking guy and he uses his observational I feel like most people that own those hats right now are somewhat. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and he uses his like his Sherlock esque observational prowess to harass a woman in the club because he's just he knows like every job she's had, you know, uh, cosmetic job and what all the scents she's wearing, and she gets mad, mad and leaves, and he gets he gets asked to leave. Um, and uh, it's hard to kind of... I, I was having trouble following it, but it was all pretty funny. Sherlock was funny. He, uh... He, uh... Wait, who's... Uh, yeah, he... They go back to Sherlock's office, and he eats weird stuff. Um, and uh, then we go into, like... There's a sequence where it's like he goes into detective mode, and it's this weird, like... Kind of sequence with music. And then... The way he reenacts cases once he's figured them out is through Rakugo. <laughs> so he sits down and he does a Rakugo act where he's talking to himself about uh, about the case and what happened. Uh, you know what? I respect it. I respect bringing your cultural heritage into the into the fold. Um, and and much like all Sherlock Holmes, uh, and Holmes like like detective inferences. He's figuring all the stuff out about the case. It's all super flimsy and could easily be explained by other things. But like, just by looking at this dead woman's body, he knows the killer has a long, uh, a long nail on his index finger and he's exactly this tall and fucking all this shit, you know? Uh, so he figures out who the guy is and, um, they he confronts him and it's this limo driver who's the limo driver for the owner of the hostess club and uh the driver freaks out and drives away and main character tries to chase after him and um uh he the gas pedal stuck and he finally gets it unstuck and he rams right into sherlock and fucking sends him flying through the air and the 
Um, the timing on him getting hit by the car is the thing. It, it's so excellently timed. It's it, nothing else has made me laugh harder this whole season. It is. Uh, <laughs> it's very well done because Sherlock's in the middle of the speech and he just gets fucking <laughs> destroyed by this fucking car and winds up like sounds like a good bit uh, it, it was a very it was a very good bit and he just like ends up in a heap on the ground you know and uh, in like a full body cast um and i guess they caught the guy he was trying to make himself look like jack the ripper because he accidentally killed a whore uh so and that was the end of the end of the episode so i, I couldn't believe that like one of these fucking sherlock themed shows actually turned out to be good and it's going to be 24 episodes, which is nuts. So, pleasantly surprised. I don't know. Nice, dude. Happy with Hell it. Hell yeah. So, yeah. Uh, a little discombobulated, though. There was It was not super well held together, but I was entertained, so who cares, I guess. All right. Uh, oh, my gosh. This is the last one yeah we did i this is I, it, man. I found out that shin chuka ichiban is a sequel so we didn't have to watch it hallelujah fucking praise the lord escaped. It's a, what, my brow there. Somehow, somehow a sequel and not a reboot to a show that aired in like 1996 okay uh but our final everybody was, sh- waiting. Everybody was waiting those old heads were fucking bated breath dead. yeah yeah, for fucking thir- uh, 23 years, they were just waiting. Like, we're gonna- I thought I thought a sequel to Uta Ware Romano was ridiculous after 10 years or whatever. 13, you know. I mean, that, that Shin Chuka Ichiban, like that show generated some seriously loyal fans. I think it was yeah. Chuka Ichiban. That, this Shin means new or, or true or whatever. Yeah, they were, I mean, they were waiting. Like, how the fuck does the, the, the story of... A 19th century Ooh. Chinese uh, restaurant come to come to. How does that resolve? Are they going to get the pork buns out? No, I'll never find out. No, maybe not. I mean, I hope they do. Put this. Put the soup in those dumplings. Whole episode where they try to put the soup in the dumplings. Someone burns their mouth. Oh no! What are they going to do? How are they going to deal with it? Uh, last show's rifle is beautiful. No, oh, I forgot to go through all the pictures in this. Oh well. Rifle is beautiful. Uh, you watched this. I did. Another rifle show. Fuck yeah. Or another gun show. Rifles, though. Uh, this is adapted from a four coma. Could you tell? No. No? It's, I once, uh, once they get into no. it, I kind of noticed. No, uh, no. Not, not at all. The structure of this show is air fucking tight for 22 minutes. Well, I mean, never that's... at any point during the 22 minutes that I think, holy fuck, did we just enter another show that's completely different in which they do not shoot guns? Are you being sarcastic? Yes, I'm being sarcastic. Oh, okay. Um, but the studio has three hertz. They did Dimension W and Flip Flappers and Princess Principle and Sora No Method. Uh, first episode is called What Are Beam Rifles? <laughs> but, um,. Our main character, she's the best part of this show. She's got ribbons, and she's kind of a she's a lovable klutz, kind of a fuck up. She's got ribbons. I like her a lot. She's super excited to join this club, and then we get the opening, and uh, opening's all let's go. Uh, but it turns out the club doesn't exist no more. Uh, so they just they just gotta find four more people. And then the club will be okay. Which During the opening, I was immensely excited. Yeah? I have to say, my blood was boiling. <laughs> like, I, I, was, I was like, fuck yeah, girls. Go shoot those fucking guns. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. You exercise your Japanese constitutional rights <laughs> <laughs> to own guns. <laughs> Shall not be infringed, motherfucker. These, look, I'm going to be honest. These Japanese, they want guns so bad. <laughs> and they, just they deserve them. them. Oh. They do. They'd be they, look. If you gave the Japanese guns right now, their violence wouldn't go up one percentage. They'd point. be so good at guns, man. Oh, um, they'd be the best at guns. Ridiculous. <laughs> and they can't have them. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck this gay earth. <laughs> uh, that feel when Japs can't have guns. <laughs> 
so yeah, it's like they're doing the oh, you got to find people for the club, but at least the, the main character is super likable. So they find this sulking redhead who apparently uh, the MC knows and has lo- and uh, has lost to the MC before. So they uh, join back up, and then they also meet a a coup d'ere blue headed girl. And it's ba- they they literally just it's just an Asuka and a Ray. They just yeah, have Asuka and Ray in this show. Yeah, she like she's like half Russian and shit. Yeah, and- yeah. They even do the nationality thing, even though it doesn't make it doesn't, it's not anything about her personality. You know, she's got like identical hair. You'd think the coup d'ere girl would be Russian because the of the sort of tampered emotions. I don't right. know. But uh, yeah, they they it's like you think the whole normally the first episode like the whole thing is them trying to find club members, but they find them all in seven minutes. They find all four of them. Yeah, I liked I liked how accelerated it was. Yeah, it's just like it all right, like, we found them. Let's go. Yeah, like let's get into the actual sport, and the sport turns out to be the dumbest fucking thing ever. Well, they don't use real guns. Okay, sure. I was upset. I was not happy about. Them it's not, not them. ideal. Yeah. Um. May, hey, uh, I, I know it's not going to happen, but I, I wish they had an episode where they could like take a trail, field trip to America and they're just shooting fucking bull pups and, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and fucking uh, ARs, you know? Yuji <gasps> Disney? Hickok 45 makes a cameo. <laughs> oh my God. Anime Hickok 45. Anime Dude, Hickok, I would lose Hickok 45 it. here. I would, uh, I would never recover from that if they put Hickok 45 in an anime. That's the homie. Yeah, yeah. Friend, friend of the show, Hickok Forty Five. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Sponsor, sponsor of the show. This is uh, what? What's his? What's his ammunition sponsor? Allied ammunition or something? Oh, uh, uh, fed, federal? No, uh, federal. It's it's federal. Is it federal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Luckily, what, I was what a man. just looking at. Oh yeah, rock solid. I. Man, I, I need. I should buy a gun. I was I've been thinking about, about it. it. I want something. I, uh, I want something portable in case I go because I because I, I want something that's applicable for like camping. I want something. To, I want like a folding, like one of those uh, PC uh, carbines. Uh, carbines. Or one of those survival rifles where it all fits into the butt or whatever. Sure. Um, yeah. I was thinking about picking up a Glock 15, because mm-hmm. um, it's like the most gun gun that exists. You know, it's like just it's never gonna fail on you. Yeah, and it's super damn. It's like ridiculously cheap. Yeah, I think I think it's considered a a a pleb opinion to not like Glocks, but I just don't like the way they. I don't like the way they look, and and I know like um, again, it's it's another like I don't know. It's some kind of like combination of boomer and pleb opinion that to have a sort of bias against plastic guns, but I. I just want a Beretta. I just think they look I, so cool. I understand. Yeah, I'm, an, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a 1911 guy myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, I, I'm i a beginner. I'm going to listen to everybody who knows what the fuck they're talking about. And then just like, buy a Glock 15 and run, just fucking shoot it until it don't work no more. So, mm-hmm. uh, but at, at the same time, I do like a rifle. It, I'm in a pickle because the only place I really want to shoot is way up on the other side of the country. And mm. I couldn't, possibly transport uh, a glock 15 um it just wouldn't be practical i'd have to drive basically have to keep it up here yeah and it's like i want to be able to shoot it mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's fun by the way in case you're wondering if you have the opportunity to shoot guns make sure you do even if it's a hundred year old 22 that's the that's almost the most fun time yeah because there's no there's almost no danger you shoot someone it's like ah well i guess we got to go to the Hospital. We gotta go to the hospital and get this fucking bullet taken out, and then we can get back to drinking by the campfire. You don't even, like, even take the bullet out. You just sew that shit up. You leave it in there. Whatever. <laughs> just brass. Who uh, cares? But uh, yeah, I, I I feel like I'm just gonna get a Glock 15 and, and or, or like a I, I you know I was looking at uh, long rifles and stuff, and the gun I've been shooting on for my entire life is so jank and old. Then I'm sure these it would be just like easy. Oh yeah, you know? it'd be like having a fucking a, a fucking phaser, you know. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it's like, "Oh my god, the bullets actually go where they think I think they're going to go." Ridiculous. Yeah. Up here you can't get a pistol unless you're like a senator or something. Uh, so, I was uh, yeah, that's why I was looking at um like rifles that are just uh pistol uh calibers, you know, that just shoot shoot yeah. uh 
nine millimeter to 10 millimeter, yeah, whatever. That's nine millimeters. So cheap. That's what you want to be shooting anyway. Yeah. You know, you, you, you want to get something. Cause there's something compact. Game. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, okay. So this show, they find, yeah, they're, uh, yeah. And they start doing club stuff. There's some boob comments. Uh, our main character is deceptively stacked. Yes. And, um, uh, yeah, they're not using real guns. They got, uh, like, basically laser laser uh, tag guns. And that's, after they establish everything, that's when I really started noticing the four coma because there's very sudden non sequiturs where it'll just cut to a scene and someone will introduce, like, the theme of the four coma. Like, hey, you do this. And it's, like, very obvious setup mm-hmm. for the four coma. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I notice I notice it's, it's a, it's a little too abrupt. I I just think they're kind of they're not really well rated in the actual like it doesn't feel like an overall narrative, which is the hazard of adapting a four coma. You yeah. either have to lean into it or not do it at all, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um it's something like Pinchy Joe can get away with it because they kind of extend them out and they're discrete sequences. Where in a show like this, it's it's very much like an overarching narrative and they don't have those kind of breaks. Like they don't drop a title card or anything, you know? Season three of what is coming out, Mage? What are we talking about? Sorry, I had to... He's he's talking about that 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 Chinese cooking show, maybe. Chinese cooking show? Uh, The uh, uh, the Shinchuka Ichiban. What? Shinchuka Ichiban. What were we talking about that? It was a show we talked about because you're recapping it. Oh, of the old. Oh, right, right, right. And also, he says he's been collecting guns his whole life. Still hate Glocks. Uh, Beat the fuck out by Mage. Yeah. Destroyed. Obliterated. With that being said, he did misspell collecting, so I'll take his. Uh... <laughs> That's the Chad way to spell. He's not typing. He's not pressing that L twice. <laughs> What? Why would you need two of those? They do th- correct it's spelling hard. is an invention of of modernist intellectual fags. We don't need two L's. Do you know what he means? I've been collecting guns. <laughs> <laughs> Got you, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, you fucking dork. <laughs> His birthday was a week ago. Got him. Oh, that's just mean. Uh, one of the girls is sweaty. And then they buy some snacks. I like uh, this one. This one is my favorite part of the episode because it was like, I'm not a person that would enjoy that particular fetish, but let's say you're somebody who's in the sweaty girls, you probably get off on that, and that's chill. Oh yeah, for sure. And then um, we find out that one of the girls tells jokes, so she tries to do a joke, and it's she puts on bunny ears and says like, "Hey," <laughs> I, I don't know. Um. They preface it by saying that old people like her jokes. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. So, and old people, like, they're just surprised that you're not whipping them or whatever. So they're probably like, oh my God, what a novelty. This is great. I've been thinking if that, you know, if uh, if I needed to sharpen up my my conversational skills, volunteering in an old folks home, because like they don't give a fuck and they're not going to be around for very long to judge me. You just, you just try them all out, huh? Yeah, just try to charm the old ladies. I talked to this, I, I, uh, I talked to this, like, probably s- late 50s, maybe 60-year-old uh, lady at the grocery store. She was asking me about hot peppers, and um, I was thinking afterwards, like, I probably could have fucked that lady. That, uh, <laughs> she's, busy. she's like, oh, ever since my husband died, I haven't been She's 60, she's not 80, you don't, have to, you don't have to do the voice. <laughs> Why sixty? I mean, I have my parents are sixty, but you know, they're yeah, getting they're a not, little bit into that uh, range. So it, she was the, at the age where, like, you know, you could tell she definitely used to be hot. Ah, uh, sort of like a like a old hippie looking type. Nice. Did she not have a bra? No, just she had that sort of face. I don't know how to explain it. I know what you're saying. A little, a little stony. Yeah, something like that. Okay. But, uh, so yeah, you know, Rifle is Beautiful actually seems okay. I, uh, I kind of had a good time. And I think, uh, the, I, I think the ED was animated by that one guy who, make, who gives people too much swagger when they walk. 
Because they did that for Sora No Method, too. He animated that AD. What were you going to say? Personally, didn't get much out of this. Mm, I feel you. It felt like kind of a non-show to me. I don't blame you. I saw most of the tropes, and I'm like, the fake sport is dumb, so I'm not interested. <laughs> but not my kind of dumb. If it was, like, extra dumb, like, uh, what was it, Jet Girls? Like, <laughs> that, shit's, that shit's cool with me. Yeah. <laughs> But this is just mostly like a bunch of girls in a gymnasium. And it's like a fake sport that could be real. So it's I wasn't probably real. Interested. Yeah, no, it's definitely real. I'm not interested. Unfortunately. Damn. Damn. No, but you know what? I'm glad you got something out of it, buddy. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, you know, I might uh, check out a little bit more of that. But that's all, folks, I think. Fucking A. That's the end of the season. Nailed that shit. We watched all of it once. You, once again, well, some one of us did, anyways. You know. They said that we couldn't do it, and we didn't. But I did. <laughs> so, you're welcome. Yeah. So, and and that's all the shows of the year. We, we did might it. have. To, we might have to do a, or at least I might have to do an uh, end of the year retrospective or an end of the decade retrospective. Holy shit! Uh, it's time to look back. I mean, we all know that Girls' Last Tour is show of the decade. That's good. I mean, you know, ping pong's better, but whatevs. You haven't seen Girls' Last Tour. A little bit of it. You watched the first episode. A little bit. That is only a little bit. Mm, you know, I think I'm able to make a definitive opinion on it. No, got, you're fucking not. I think, I, I think I've distilled the entirety of that show look, as, into one 22-minute sequence. Look, as someone whose number two show of the decade is ping pong, please listen to me. <laughs> Girls Last Tour is life affirming. Let's see what else we got. We've got uh, well, Steins Gate we've and Madoka. Gachamon's gotcha crowds. What? That's a good show. No, gotcha it's. Man. I mean, that's not well, even. The part where they go, gotcha man. That sounds that's fine, good. but it's like I don't, that's good. I don't know if that you need that. You've seen uh, eight shows Glass this decade. Got <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We got um, pun, like punch, punch, where... punchline. Oh yeah, that's good too. Love me some punchline. Uh, uh what was that fucking uh that uh Guy Max show? Uh CQB. CQB. That was a good show. That actually uh, was okay though. Uh what about Control. <laughs> oh yeah. Um fucking uh Pupa. Oh, gotta love Pupa. Pupa is so good. Netsuzo Trap. Oh my gosh. This is great. You All know, this like, we'll gold. We'll have to save it for a future episode. One Punch Man season two, specifically. Two Punch. Two Punch Man. Um, what else aired this decade that was so, so cool. good? Um, Capellian. <laughs> I'm just looking at all my fours. Uh, oh, Fuka. Silver Spoon. Silver Spoon. Obviously, show of the decade. Um, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be mad putting that in at like number nine, number ten, maybe. It's probably uh, up else? there. Monica's pretty good. I had a good time watching Monica. God, and even the movie probably deserves. Oh, that's not a series. If it was, a, you know, if we're doing movies and. Shows oh shit! When did uh, I, I guess I guess uh, Evangelion 2.0 was that was 09. Yep. So like, fuck. <laughs> uh, you know what? We're ben, good. Bento. Well, was ben? that this decade? 2011. Yeah. Uh, Yuri Yuri, I think probably deserves it up there. Yuri on Ice, you know, despite how gay it is, Didn't pretty good. It. Pop Team Epic. Yeah, very good. Uh, Sora Yori, Antarctic, We're not Antarctica show. Season of that, are we? They've been rumoring it. I don't know. Wait, isn't it a manga or something? They probably have to wait until there's more. There's so much of that shit. That should have been going on for a while. Or was man. it original? I don't remember actually. Go, Gochi Yusa, apparently, according to Angry Mage. Is it? Ah, a uh, uh, it's a. Uh, you know, as far, as far as slice of lives go, I mean. Even even the Hitamari that came out this decade is is I would put above above Go I, so. I got a lot of Do Ra Ra Ra. That was twenty twenty ten, and the sequel the sequel series came out pretty soon after. So I got to know Lion definitely deserves a spot. Uh, I liked Servant Service. 
which is like a lesser working from what I understand. I wouldn't put that in the top. No, 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 I'm just talking about stuff I liked. Okay, okay. Uh, Disappearance of Haruhi, technically this decade. Ooh, 2010? 2010. Um, yes. Ping Pong, Chunibyo definitely deserves something. Very entertaining. Oh, um, Nichi Bros, Masterpiece. Quite Penguin good. Drum, excellent. Uh, Jin Rui was Sui Tai. Humanity has declined. Anohana. We'll, we'll, we'll have to do. We'll have to do an episode. We'll do an episode bringing out the new the new decade. You will have so. to watch. If you're gonna I'll do, watch, if, if you give me, if you give me like three things, I can watch them by the end of the year. Yeah, you need to watch Tatami Galaxy. Okay. You need to watch Girls Last Tour, and you need to watch uh, Steins Gate. I, I would can say do those by the end of the year. Those. Steins Gate, I'm already ready to watch. Jerry. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, uh, Oremo, duh, obviously. <laughs> oh no, man! Uh, all of Simfo Gear. I'm. I, I would. Uh, I would do a not like any individual season, but I would do like a Lord of the Rings Academy Award sort of. You deserve this for this whole effort. Uh, thing for all of Simfo Gear because holy shit, five seasons, unbelievable. Uh. Yamano Susume, same thing. Three seasons. Com yeah, also, yeah, I, I, I would put Yamano Susume above Gochi Yusa, honestly. Hoseki no Kuni. Um, Yuru Camp, so good. Uh, 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 Akunohana and also Anohana. <clears throat> yep, agreed. Specifically, pro probably just Anohana, but I personally actually really loved Akunohana. I think Akunohana is definitely notable enough. It's it's got to be in the top twenty five, I think. Oh, for sure. Just in terms of like sheer notoriety and and controversy, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really liked Gabriel Dropout and Yojo Senki even. Oh, um, New game. I think what else? Uh oh, Sh Showa again, uh, Rakugo, the Rakugo show, the historical one. Oh yeah yeah yeah. It, it, uh, I was fucking... gonna, I was gonna bring that up. That is something I will watch before I die. I will. I swear to God. That's uh, yeah. That's uh, that's a fantastic show. I I swear on my mother's life, I will watch that show before I die. Um, the I'm gonna I'm gonna give the uh, best total trash harem award to Nisekoi. Koi. Absolute oh, brain yeah. candy. <laughs> Can't couldn't stop watching. Kill a kill yeah. maybe squeezes in there. It was okay. I can't. I mean, not that I have enough to where I'm able to squeeze it out. It's more just like it didn't. It, I liked Kill a Kill, but it still didn't live up to what it could have been. Yeah. Um. Oh. 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 Fucking Hyoka. Little Wedge Academia. Little Wedge Academia definitely has to find its way. Well, in. the OVA, I guess. Yes. Yes. Series. I can't. I still can't believe there was a 24 episode Little Witch Academia series. Too much. Too much. <laughs> it's not that it was too been... much. It just like wasn't. It was okay, but it's like wow. I can't believe they did that because I barely remember it happening. Ooh, you know. What else did Kiwani pump out this decade? Hyoka, um, Maid Dragon, Amagi, um, Kaon. Oh, Nietzsche Joe is this decade. That's without a doubt. Sure. Absolutely. A, like for me. Panty and stocking. Ta oh, Tomico Market. We got Tomico Market in the that film. That show was very good. Disagree. I loved it. Uh, Strike Witches. Second I season loved, was 2010. Uh, that counts. I actually love the Tomico Market movie. I have a poster for it in my apartment right now. Um, oh, yeah. I remember that poster. Yeah. Liked it. I liked it. It just, uh, you yeah. know. All right. Well, we'll Idol, do it another I, time. Idol Master, not bad. Definitely makes the top 30. I, this, a uh, couple weeks ago, I was like, oh shit, is Toradora 10 years old? Holy fuck. And then I realized that in 2018, it was 10 years old. <laughs> and, oh no, yes. I missed it. <laughs> but, hey, man. Well, welcome to me realizing that Halo 3 is 12 years old. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, half my life is gone. I'm so glad I wasn't a Halo guy because, yeah, I bet that's fucking horrifying. 
No, it's it was the best period in the history of video gaming. Well, I'm just like oh. realizing how old it is is probably like yeah, an existential no, no, nightmare. No, no, it's, no, it's makes me want to die. Yeah. The only game I play on a consistent basis came out in 2001, man. Like, it's awful. Are you that you still play on a consistent basis? Yeah, yeah. Hey, just Halo. Yeah, Smash, dude. Oh, may melee. Yeah, and then until Reach comes out on PC, in which case I'm back in, baby. Hmm. There's still so much more Reach to be played. People don't realize how much more of that game there is. We're going to milk <laughs> it. Means... We're going to milk it for everything it's got. Uh, to we got to go. Yep. This is it. Time to wrap we got to go fucking harass people on, on VR chat. We got to go uh, lay down the law. Yep. So thanks for joining us for this fall, everyone. Thanks, guys. Much love. We'll see you next time. Pressures. Thoughts themselves are still interacting with matter or a belief in a higher power. Lighting everything on fire and shooting each other. Innovating at a rapid pace. Sending rockets into space. And examining the way you interface with something where you worried about the fate of the human race. Could be tough and it could be great. By the time it already happens, it'll be too late. Also, this disconnect. If all the aspects of your life is shit, you feel bad. It got out of control. <laughs> this is some people are just assholes. The moment everything's bizarre and strange. Flux is what creates growth and change. All this feedback, almost abstract. How the fuck did that become that? YouTube videos, which go on uninterrupted and spew out a bunch of fucking fake facts. This fucking great video of it. Did you watch the video?